Hello, Parvakar. Are you able to see the screen? Pravakran, Duchi. Am I audible? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. And uh, are you able to see the screen? Uh, yes, yes. It's visible. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So, Pravakran has doubt regarding final exams. Final exam questions. Okay. Tight or solving problem. I didn't get your point. You are asking about means what means the pattern would be pattern will be similar like to the we have solved in the assignment. Pravakran, can you elaborate means what you want to ask? Okay, we will discuss uh, later. Ah, no, sir. So, yeah. Ah, tell me, sir. Yes. Uh, miss, what doubt you want to ask about the final exam? Ah, final exam. Aptitude uh, exam. No, no. Uh, this solving uh, problem. The similar Aptitude to your type. assignment pro assignment problem. Hello, solving the, problem. Yeah, solving Sol problem is numerical type will be also there. Well, solving problem or objective type, also. I am not confirmed, but uh, as the means uh, course TA has told that this the problem will not not asked from the software part. All with the, all problems related to this numerical or integer type means uh, objective type or integer type. Oh, okay, so you okay. have to you. you have to well prepared for both both of the, both of them. Just okay, not, okay. don't assume that all the problems will be objective type. Uh, sir. Okay, okay. Yes. Uh, yeah, that uh, formulas we need to buy hard because there are very big formulas. And yes. Sir. We need to buy I hard. Think, yes, uh, I think uh, some uh, means uh, if they think like that they should provide some data or some expression they will give in the question otherwise i think so, some basic one they will not provide okay okay so and uh, like 50 questions for uh, how much duration it is for three hours just like questions for three I hours know, uh, Number I know of that questions will be. I'm not. I'm. I, I don't know about what the number of questions. You can ask in the discussion forum because. Okay, we'll do this. Uh, in discussion forum, everyone will. Put, everyone are there, so they will uh, reply honestly. Thank. Thank. Okay. So coming to this today's assignment. So let us discuss this today's assignment. Today's tutorial session that is session number 11. So before we begin to solve the uh, tutorial session, let us have a quick recap about the concept that we have gone through in this week 11 lectures. So in this week 11, we are discussing about the connection of PV with the grid. So as we all know that this PV power is, is of intermittent in nature. So we required some energy buffer like battery or pump hydro to interface this PV power because at some moment of time we want to store it and at some moment of time we want to, that store energy to be given to the load. So energy buffer is required for interfacing this intermittent nature of power that is PV power. 
and one of the one of the means uh, one typical way you can connect directly to the grid and from the grid we know that any amount of power we can draw and it is just like an ideal voltage source with negligible output impedance and power from pv can be given to the grid as a, as a supplement source so let us see the grid connection principle so as i told you this grid is a voltage source with negligible output impedance and you cannot connect two voltage source in parallel so we need to require we need to have a current source to connect this with the grid and current source is a high output impedance source and you can pump current at a pc level into the grid so power is pumped into the grid so here if you see the diagram this is a voltage source and you have connected inductance in series with this voltage source so that it can become a current source and a current source can be connected to the voltage source in parallel so this is the structure for the grid, for the principle of grid connection and if you write if you want to write the equation of grid current then it is simple you have to apply this kvl expression and you will and this inductor equation you will get this expression now in order to maxi, in order to utilize maximum from the p panels from which we are drawing power we would like to grid current to fed into the grid in such a way that this maximum active power is fed into the grid we don't want any reactive power that is fed into the grid so this grid current will be put in phase with the grid voltage at unit power factor and if you want to have unit power factor then suppose you have uh, assumed this grid voltage as vm sin omega t then this uh, grid current will also having im sin omega t and you, if you put this expression in this kvl expression you will get vm sin omega t plus omega l im cos omega 2 that is this control voltage source expression and if you apply this control voltage source expression according, according to this expression then the grid current will be in phase with the grid voltage that is uh, desired one now this is the principle of uh, grid connection now what are the topology we have to we will uh, we can see for pv grid interface ion topologies can be divided on the base on the basis of isolation and isolation means like there may be uh, transfer connected and there are maybe some circuits that are that uh, through which we can provide isolation that we call as transformerless isolation and it also depend on the number of power stages means how many number of control converters you have connected between the pv and grid there may be single stage there may be dual stage dc ac converter only that is single stage dc dc and then dc ac then that will call as dual stage and and we have based on this control dynamics what type of control we have implemented to interface this pv with the grid based on that there may be some topology for this interference of pv with the grid so we will see one by one so the first one of the basic uh, means conventional type if we see the uh, connection of pv with the grid so as we all know that this pv is a dc source so at the input anyhow we have to connect the dc part I means either you apply dc ac converter dc dc converter but at the input side it should be dc so that in a conventional structure if you apply this dc dc converter and the work for this dc dc converter is to, to is to implement the mppt so that you can extract the maximum power from the pv panel and the next stage you apply this voltage or current control to get the desired voltage at this end and after getting this voltage at the voltage of desired value then you need to unfold and 
this unfolding is done to convert this DC signal to AC signal so that you can convert so that you can interface the circuit with the grid. So if you see this uh, DC, DC and unfold structure. So here we are having this uh, DC, DC part for voltage of current control. And then we are having this unfolding circuit. In unfolding circuit, a push, push pull circuit has been implemented. So this uh, that this advantage of push pull stage is that it is tightly coupled with this isolating stage. So we replace it with this bridge circuit. And this implementation of bridge circuit will be like this. So here this bridge circuit is decoupled from the isolating stage. Now coming to the second implementation, second topology for interference of PV with the grid. And in that, in this circuit, what we have done, we have just coupled two parts. In earlier part, we are using DC, DC plus unfold circuit. So here, both the circuit has been combined in one part that is inverter. So DC DC converter plus unfolding stage is replaced with a single power stage that is called inverter stage. So this is inverter. We have come coupled two circuits DC DC that is for voltage control and unfolding unfolding uh, uh, block that does convert convert from DC to AC. So both are coupled in a single converter that we call it as inverter. So this typical structure for inverter, you can see this is H bridge and this is interface with this uh, transformer and it can, it can control this voltage at this, uh, uh, in, at this side of the transformer. So what is the demerit of this circuit? The demerit of this circuit is that line frequency transformer is very bulky and expensive. So in order to, Again, means uh, in order to again uh, mini minimizing the circuit miniature, this circuit, we have providing the isolation at this DC DC part. So in this uh, earlier circuit, what we are doing, we have separate line frequency transformer, and now we interface this isolation part in this DC DC stage. Again, if this uh, structure be implemented, the issue is that we having safety issue. If some cleaning person is doing work on this PV panel, there may be electrostatic discharge take place through this cleaning purpose. So this method is also not recommended. Means uh, here, if there is no transformer, then this uh, will take place because there is no isolation between the grid and the converter. So in order to provide safety to the cleaning person, we have to interface transformer somewhere and to interface the transformer, like if you have removed the line frequency transformer, then you can interface this uh, high frequency transformer to this converter so that this uh, safety, safety will also can, safety can also be taken care. So transformerless interface is not the desired one. So this transform high frequency solution is shifted to DC DC converter stage. So in that stage, you can apply many types, many types of uh, isolation converter like flyback, push pull, and hub bridge isolation isolated converter, full bridge isolated converter. So you can apply one of them and you can get isolation at the DC DC converter stage. And this flyback converter topology is the isolated version of the Buckwish topology. So these are all what we have seen that is for single phase grid connection. Now we will see some topology for three phase grid connection. 
so in this part we are having uh, dc dc converter for this mppt uh, enabling and this second part is inverter for controlling the voltage and interface with the grid and in the fifth implementation what we have done we have done this mppt and this inverter control at a single stage so this for current control inverters mppt can be integrated with the inverter so this is for three phase uh, implementation and the below one is for single phase implementation so now we are having this uh, inductance that you can also uh, that you can also consider it as filter inductance so if this filter inductance is large enough then the if the means we have a transformer also and we know that this leakage inductance transformer is one of the major uh, it, it can also work as it can also have an inductive property so it can also work as the filter for the converter so if this leakage inductance of transformer is large enough then the filter inductance then this filter inductor can be removed from the circuit so how we can measure the leakage inductance of the transformer so so there are two steps so first sort this uh, secondary part and measure the inductance across the primary to obtain the equivalent leakage inductance value as seen from the primary and in the second in the second step you have to sort this primary and measure the inductance across the secondary to obtain the equivalent leakage inductance value as seen from the secondary so you will get two equations and you can uh, you can get this uh, l sigma p and l sigma s so you will get the leakage inductance of transformer and based on your desired filter inductance value for your for your uh, for your converter you can choose either you, have, you need to design a separate inductor or you can just uh, get it through this transformer but you cannot control this uh, leakage inductance of transformer but you can vary the inductance of whatever inductance you want to interface so the you have to means like from from here from transformer you get to know this leakage inductance and based on this like you can subtract from the desired inductance you can put the that inductance value to the circuit So there are some questions. How current source of high high impedance? So this is the what you can say. This is the inbuilt characteristics of current source. If current source has means a voltage source having having less impedance and current source having high impedance and how to calculate the inductance value in dc ac and folding push pull converter
Sorry, you are in mute. Now it is okay. So I am sharing yes. the screen. I think just abruptly it has stopped. So okay. Coming to some doubts. So how to calculate inductance value in DC AC and folding push pull convert push pull inverter. So we have to. So you you want to ask at this stage. So based on generally what we are doing. Based on the power rating. of your converter we design this inductance value power rating and voltage value we are designing this inductance value and and this switching frequency also this switching frequency also vary this inductance value if switching frequency is high then inductance value will be lower and if switching frequency is lower then inductance value will increase so it depends on the it depends upon your circuit how to introduce leakage inductance in transformer so you have to go through the structure of transformer means equivalent circuit of transformer if you say then then the equivalent circuit transformer will be primary side resistance and then leakage primary side leakage inductance and then we having this magnetizing inductance and then we are having ideal winding and then we are having secondary side leakage inductance and this secondary side resistance but if you bring all of them means uh, secondary side and Secondary side resistance and secondary side inductance to the primary side. Then, then the circuit will look like this. So this is the equivalent circuit of transformer. Primary side resistance and this primary side leakage inductance, and we are having magnetizing inductance, and then secondary side equivalent secondary side inductance referred to this. primary side and then equivalent equivalent resistance referred to primary that is uh, uh secondary side resistance so we have to see this uh, equivalent circuit of transformer then we can understand better mon anything you want other thing you want to ask am i able to give the answer or you want more clarification clarification okay so let us come to the next part so we have seen the topology for connection of dv uh, with the grid now let us see the three phase grid connection from the conventional structure so so the, if you see the most conventional one then we are having this uh, pv and then we have inverter and transformer is for isolation and then we are having this grid and with the help of mppt we are generating the reference current and these reference currents are compared compared to this measured current are compared to the measured current and provided to the controller what type of controller you are being used 
and this controller gives the signal provides the modulating signal to the pwm generation block and pwm generation block will give the pulses to the gate driver and gate driver will convert the pulses according to the converter so here if you see this this references and this measured value these are ac quantity and these current this uh, this controller is of tracking type why this of tracking time because these are varying in nature these are not fixed type whatever the quantity coming to this controller this is not fixed this is varying nature this is varying nature so this controller is of tracking type and this design of tracking controller is very complex than the set point controller and the set point controller we are providing the we are providing the input to the controller we are providing this input to this uh, controller as a fixed type so the design of tracking controller is more complex than set point controller and this intra cycle dynamics can be achieved with this set point controller while this only integral cycle dynamics can be achieved with this tracking controller so this is this is having disadvantage and this tracking controller is having low bandwidth compared to the set points and large signal control is required but say this a small signal control is required for this set point controller and if you see in this type of controller we are having three separate controllers because we are having three reference signals so we require three different controllers so these are disadvantage for tracking type of controllers so here we are studying we have divided in two types of controller tracking tank tracking type controller and set point type controller now what we want to do is that in this controller type we want to this all the performance performed in dc domain so we would like to have all the variables in the control region as dc and the process of transforming from ac domain to dc domain dc domain to ac domain is popularly known as dq axis theory so if you see these are time signals here the signals are represented in time domain form and this time the signals are represented in orthogonal planes planes like in this way and if we represent this in spatial coordinate system in a space vector you will get a circle and this resultant is moving along this circle so the conclusion is from is that this time signals are now converted as a, into a space vector and the time signals can now be represented as a spatial vector or a space vector that is rotating in a space and this concept we using to convert ac signal to dc signals so let us see further so we are having this alpha bit alpha bit axis and now this dq axis is having the the this is shifted by this alpha bit axis by this row angle so you can represent this resultant vector r is theta and the resultant vector is this one so you will get r cos theta plus this one and how you can represent this r alpha beta r alpha beta is whatever the resultant vector so you get r is theta and this r dq will be printed as r e j theta minus rho because this the dq axis is separate from the alpha beta axis by this row angle so you will get this you will get this relation for conversion from alpha beta to dq and the inverse is that dq to alpha beta you will get this relation so if you see this circuit there is no change as long as r does not change and for someone sitting on the this d axis everything is seen as dc because both are because this resultant vector and this 
this dq vector both are rotating at the same speed and then for everything will be seen as sign and once the person jumps back into the alphabet axis then this is rotating and then for every everything will be seen as sine and cosine wave and the controllers are kept in dq axis reference axis which is rotating at omega t or the rotating at the same speed as r vector so this is the d axis theory principle so if we see this three uh, phase signals and if you want to express it on this a space vector then you can at the time of min means at the different spent you will get the get the quantity and you can see the means how it vary on this a space vector and this resultant vector if we see for this ac three phase ac signals will make a complete rotation and it will transcribe the circle and now just uh, uh, derive this expression for conversion from abc to alpha beta and alpha beta to dq and inverse of them so for the abc to alpha beta transformation we are having this expression and i just request all of you to remember this expression this is very important so this is for abc to alpha beta transformation and now coming to this next one next one is alpha beta to dq transformation we will having this relation so there are different names also so for avc frame for abc be called generally it as natural reference frame and for alpha beta we called it as fixed or stationary reference frame and the q be called it as synchronous rotating reference frame so a b c is the natural reference frame and alpha beta is the fixed or stationary reference frame and dq is the synchronous rotating reference frame so uh, this is three phase ac so i think this has covered in later also and this is two phase ac and this is dc quantity now you can see the similar way how you can uh, get the reverse transformation so this one is for getting alpha beta signal from dq signals and this one is for alpha getting abc signal from alpha beta signal so in the while transforming from abc to alpha beta we have multiplied with resultant will be having 3 by 2 in the alpha domain domains if so you have you want to if you reverse them then you have to multiply 2 by 3 in the abc domain and the summary is this one so abc to alpha beta we are converting three phase ac signal to two phase ac signals and for alpha beta to dq we are converting two phase ac signal to two phase dc signal dq matrix is it common for any load like for inductance induction motor solar panel
yes so you have to see means like dq whatever the expression we have seen so transformation so in if you are in application this is amplitude invariant or power invariant so it will vary based on this amplitude invariant and power invariant but for this course we are referring this whatever the sir has discussed and in matlab we generally use amplitude uh, in the blocks whatever they have provided they are amplitude invariant yeah you can uh, tell it as uh, bc quantity only but there are two quantities so that's why sir has said two phase dc in simple way you can also uh, tell it as dc quantity but uh, uh, for this just uh, means uh, based on we are asking about this that this is very this transformation as yes, it varies because whatever assumption you are taking suppose you have taken the alpha beta that are orthogonal axis and suppose your beta axis is here sir has taken leading but you may take a beta as lagging to alpha axis then your then your expression will change and similarly for this dq also if you if uh, whatever the angle alpha beta if you have assume assuming this positive or negative means it may lag to alpha beta axis or it may lead to alpha beta axis so based on that it will vary the expression and amplitude invariant and power invariant you have to look into it so there are two types of expression for this alpha abc2 dq transformation amplitude invariant and power invariant so uh, we have seen the three phase grid connection so in three phase grid connection we have seen that we are using the actual signal and providing to the controller now let us look into this how we can convert this actual signal into dc quantity and how we can implement into the controller so we are going we are implementing a part from the actual signal to the dc quantity so first we have seen in the earlier expression earlier block diagram we are seeing that we are directly giving this measured signal to the controller but now what we are doing we are converting this measured signal to this dq signal to the dc quantity and and this dc quantity are are compared with the reference quantity and we are giving to this controller and for this pwm again it will require this abcd abc modulating signal so we have to convert again into abc signal now one important point is that we want that this dq axis to be rotating along this current aspect vector so if this dq coordinate system is also rotating along this current aspect vector then this current aspect vector and dq axis are synchronized and rotate together so therefore it, this id and i will be dc and to getting this uh, row signal you can use this expression cos inverse i alpha upon i alpha square plus i beta square so in this we have taken the reference for we are taking the reference current for generating this row and this is not the uh, this is not the increasing one so apart from this uh, generating this row signal from current signal it is uh, advised to generate this row signal from this voltage signal because 
this voltage if you generate this row signal from this voltage signal and you, you can synchronize your uh, in, you can synchronize your converter with this uh, voltage signal then you can set this iq star from iq star 1 to 0 and then in steady state this iq will be 0 so id will be also in this id will be same as ig and it will be in line with this bg then we will set see the current is pumped in the grid at unity power factor so this is advantage for taking the reference of uh, for, for generating this row from this voltage signal generating this row or you can say omega t signal from this uh, voltage signal so this is the advantage we could get if we align d axis along this vg and we align this d axis along vg to get to operate the converter at unity power factor so again in the previous signal we have taken the current signal to generate this omega t or rho and now we will use the voltage signal to generate this row and we will implement in this controller so this id now we are we want to feed the power to the grid at unity five factor so this id star we can you can you can directly take from the mpt controller and feed to feed it to it and this ID star is representing this peak power output from the PV panel and this maximum power, then this maximum power can be fit into the grid. So again, we have sensed the signal, voltage signal, and we are generating this omega t or rho signal by this algebraic method. And it is also open loop, so it is not resilient to harmonics which are there in the means voltage waveform. It is not resilient to surges, to spikes, to noise. And due to many variation, many uncertainty which may cause the row value to drip. So to make it robust, a closed loop modification is suggested, and that is called phase lock loop method. So let us see how it works. In that circuit, we have taken the algebraic equation to generate this row or omega t. So this is not a, a good way because there are, there are many disadvantages. First of all, it is open loop because it, it is first of all it is open loop and it is also not resilient to harmonics which are there in the mains voltage vapor so it is not resilient to surges or spikes whatever comes in this uh, at the grid side so which may this cause this row value drift and this makes uh, this makes uh, leads this leads to unstability of the system so what we will do we will apply phase lock loop to overcome this disadvantage so this is the block diagram for for phase lock loop How to align D axis along VG practically? So this is very simple. So that's that what SR has implemented through this controller. So this is a PLL. So here we have to take this VQ star reference at zero. Now suppose this is a this is your suppose this is your uh, resultant signal VG, and now you have you just uh, take the take the means V uh, axis and Q axis component for this resultant vector, then it will be VD and VQ. So you are taking this VD VD quantity and you are taking this VQ quantity also. Now, since this is VQ quantity, so now you suppress it to zero. You want this VQ quantity to zero. So in if you suppress this VQ quantity to zero, you suppress to here, means it will become zero. When it becomes zero, 
you want to VQ zero because this P, PI controller will lead to VQ to zero. So if you if you make this VQ zero, then VG will align through this B axis. So VG will fall down and this align to this in a steady state, it will align to this B axis. So initially it may having both the components, but in a steady state, this VG quantity will align to this B axis due to this PI controller. So this PI controller is the major factor that leads to impose this uh, resultant vector on this D axis and there is no VQ component. So I have written down means what are this PI con this PLL block, how it is works. Now we will we will incorporate all the things means initially we are taking the current signals and why we have shifted voltage signal due to advantage of infinity power factor and then we are applying this voltage signal to implement this to get this row signal but uh, advantage that it is open loop and it is not robust it is not uh, it is not varying with whatever the spikes or disturbances coming at the grid so we are applying this PLL mechanism. So now we will apply all the things and we will get the complete controller. So this is voltage signals and convert to ABC to alpha beta and we apply this PLL to get the row signal and we will get the IDU IQ signal and here this IDU IQ are being compared and provide a PI controller and this MPPT current is nothing but this is axis current and IQ star is zero because we don't want to feed this quadrator axis current. We want to having active power to zero that so that we feed the only active power into the grid at unity power factor. So now let us come to the single phase grid connection and it is little bit complex than three phase grid connection. Although it is it someone means someone say that single phase will be easier than three phase, but it is not easier than three phase because whatever the voltage signal we are sensing, that is one quantity only. So if you assume this this VG and IG, the voltage signal we are sensing and let us take this VG signal as V beta. And, and we have to generate this V alpha or I alpha because there is only one signal. So we have to generate this alpha component so that it will fit into the alpha beta coordinate axis. And for this, we are using this phase shifter block and the work of phase shift block is to take this input signal and shift the phase by 90 degree. And we need to use only this beta axis component, alpha axis component. We are created just to provide this transformation and so that we could get into the DQ domain that is DC domain and we can use this set point control. And this IQ star is set it to zero because we don't want to inject any reactive power. We don't we only want to inject active current, which is in the phase current. Therefore, this IQ has to set to zero and then the current space vector will line with this voltage space vector, which will in line with this DQ axis of the rotating DQ coordinate axis, just like as a three phase system. Other things are same, just difference in this uh, generation of uh, alpha component with this phase shift block. And now let us see this how we can obtain this 90 degree phase shift. So for this uh, we are having this filter 
that is having gain 1 by root 2 and face it 45 degree so we have to just cascade both of them so we will get total gain of 0.590 degree so we have to, again we multiply with 2 to get the unity gain and there is phase shift of 90 degree so let us come to the problem so the first problem here it is So all of you try it. It is quite simple one. If you are unable to solve, then you can see the how I can how I am solving. So in this problem, the alpha beta axis voltages are given. So alpha axis voltage given as hundred sign. 100 pi t and beta axis voltage is 100 sine 100 pi t plus pi by 2. So to, it is asking that phase A of three phase system voltage when it is aligned with the alpha axis. So so let us first write the expression of alpha ABC to alpha beta conversion. Two by three zero minus one by three one upon root three minus one upon three. 1 upon minus 1 upon root 3. This side we have V alpha V beta. So V A is V A is nothing but 2 third of V alpha. So V alpha is hundred sine hundred pi by t. So it is sixty six point six seven sine hundred pi t. So correct answer is A. A is the correct answer. So all of you just try to solve the problem. Just take down your pen and paper and try to solve the problem. Rakran, Ramesh, Mohan, Niraj, Deepak, Rajnikant, RK. Today there is not, not that much complex problem. It is just the transformation and all others are basic one problem. Some verbal problems are also there. So let us come to the next problem and I just want the response from your end. So you type your answer in chat box. So this is quite simple one. In a balanced theory phase grid connected inverter from PV system VG is resultant grid voltage and this IG resultant grid current. If power from PV to the grid needs to be delivered at any power factor, which statement is correct for this condition in DQ frame? when phase A of the grid A is aligned with the D axis. Note VA equal to VM cos omega T. And the options are this one. So I just mentioned that this is multiple select question, correct. This is multiple select question. You can type your answer in the chat box. More than one option are correct. I am coming in two minutes.
so i got three responses rk bd mohan ad ramesh a so rk you are correct b and d are correct so we have seen that for unity power factor for unity power factor b having this q axis or component of ig must be zero so this this we apply through a controller and this q axis component of vg must be zero that will apply through this pll so both b and d are correct so let us move to the next problem so det determine the total impedance in milli ohm seen from the primary side of transformer operating at a frequency of 50 hertz when a secondary side is sorted given primary leakage inductance of 0 0.006 milli henry secondary leakage inductance refer to primary of 0 0.08 milli henry and magnetizing inductance of 2 milli henry assume the transformer resistance is negligible answer till two decimal points So all of you try this problem and you can type it on the chat box. So this is quite simple problem and this you can solve with the help of circuit. If you have gone, if you have, all of you have gone through the circuit theory course, from there, you can use this series parallel connection. So let us first find the L equivalent. So L equivalent will be, so this 2 million and 0 0.08 million are parallel. So L equivalent is 0 0.06 plus 2 million parallel with 0 0.08 million. So all the units are same. So we don't need to need to do conversion. So L equivalent will be 0 0.06 and for parallel 2 into 0 0.08 upon 2 plus 0 0.08. So to do simplification, it will be 0 0.06 plus 0 0.077. So it will be 0 0.137 milli Henry. And we know that X equivalent is 2 pi F L equivalent so 100 pi F is 50 hertz. The frequency is given as 50 hertz. L equivalent is 0 0.137 convert milli Henry into Henry. So so that is asking your answer in milli ohm only. So don't convert milli to milli Henry to Henry, just keep at is keep as it is. So 100 pi. So it will be 43.0156 milli ohm. And the range they provided, the NPTL has provided the range the NPTL has provided is 41 to 45. So correct answer is 43 million. And if you have put your answer within this range, you will get the marks. Yes, Mohan. So that you corrected correctly, Meli Henry. So we will also get the reactance or impedance correctly after calculating the L equivalent. So let us come to the next problem. So this is quite this is also quite select the accurate statement regarding utilizing an unfolding circuit to integrate the photovoltaic system with the grid. And the options are a option is unfolding circuit convert the AC waveform to DC waveform. 
then folding circuit converts the DC waveform from a DC DC converter to AC waveform. The unfolding circuit is a pass filter, and the D option is the unfolding circuit is used to give negative input waveform. So I got one different one response, two response. Any other one? Is RK and Mohan both of you are correct? Sorry. So B is the correct option. So we have seen that the interference of this uh, PV with the single phase grid, the most conventional one, in that we will having this DC DC converter for MPPT control. And then we will have DC DC converter for voltage or current control. And then we are having this unfolding circuit to convert this DC 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 waveform to AC waveform to interface with the grid. And then we are having transformer for isolation. So let us come to the next problem. What is the use of PLL circuit in grid integration with the photovoltaic system? And this is multiple slide question. More than one options are correct. Multiple slide question. RK, Mohan, both of you are correct. A and C are correct. Very good. So, for determining the grid voltage phase angle, A is correct. For determining the grid voltage frequency. Let us come to the next problem. For the following signal, AV signals as VA, VB, VC, find the value of V alpha, V beta, mod of V alpha, V beta at t equal to 1 upon 200 second. So all of you try to solve this problem. Meanwhile, I will also solve this problem. So, so let us first write the AVC to alpha beta conversion expression so that we can find V alpha V beta. So this is the expression transformation from AVC to V alpha V beta. And we know that V alpha is one minus half V plus VC. V a minus half V plus VC. For balanced system, for balanced system, V a plus V plus VC equal to zero. So you can substitute V plus VC equal to minus V a. Therefore, you will get 
वी अल्फा इक्वल टू माइनस वी ए माइनस हाफ माइनस वी ए सो विल गेट थ्री बाय टू वी ए सो यू आर हैविंग वी अल्फा एज थर्टी साइन फिफ्टी पाई so this expression you got for v alpha now you can directly write v beta is 30 cos 150 pi t so you can directly write or if you want to solve so let us see how we can solve for v alpha v beta as we can how we can solve for v beta so if you see the expression for v beta it is coming as root 3 upon t root 3 upon 2 into v b minus v c so let us first find the v b minus v c ए बी माइनस वी सी सो टेक ट्वेंटी आउट साइड सो इट विल बी ट्वेंटी साइन फिफ्टी फाइव बाई टी माइनस वन ट्वेंटी डिग्री माइनस साइन फिफ्टी फाइव टी प्लस वन ट्वेंटी डिग्री सो I want to mention one expression here: sin x minus sin y equal to two cos x plus y upon two sin x minus y upon two. So this expression we are used to we are going to use over using the above expression. So this expression be substitute here, so we will get v b minus v c equal to twenty. So inside will be two cos c plus two cos x plus y upon y x plus y upon two. It will be two cos fifty pi t and sine c x minus y upon two. So it will be. Minus one twenty, minus one twenty. So it will be minus one twenty degree. So it will be twenty into two cos fifty pi t, and minus sine one twenty will be. So sine one twenty is root three upon two. So it is minus. Root three upon two. So two two get cancelled out. So it will be minus twenty into root three cos fifty pi t. Now you substitute v b minus v c in the first v beta expression. So we will get v beta as minus thirty minus thirty cos. Fifty pi t. So this is expression for v beta. Now they are asking about mod of v alpha plus mod of v beta at t equal to one upon two hundred second. So we have to substitute at t equal to one one by two hundred second. At t equal to one upon two hundred second. So v alpha equal to three thirty sine fifty pi t. So it will be thirty upon root two, and v beta will be minus thirty cos Fifty pi into one upon two hundred. So it will be minus thirty upon two. 
therefore v alpha plus v beta mod equal to 60 upon root 2 so you'll get 30 root 2 so you'll get 42 upon 4 to 6 4 and the range nptl has given for this problem is 41 to 44 So any doubt till here? So let us see the next problem. Now they are asking about VD plus VQ for rho equal to 25 pi t at t is equal to 1 upon 100 second. So let us solve this. So first we write the expression for VD, VQ, D, DQ, alpha, beta to DQ conversion expression. Cos rho, sin rho, minus sin rho, cos rho. V alpha, V beta. So here I want to ask one thing. If you want to write V alpha V beta, if you know this conversion, then how you can write? Anyone can tell. So what is the relation of this with this? Can anyone tell? If you want to write the inverse of this expression means in the first expression we have written alpha beta dq transformation and now if you want to write dq to alpha beta transformation then how what is the how you can write here directly if you know this first expression is yes, anyone So here I am giving you one trick, then how you can, if you know this alpha beta dq transformation, then how you can remember the dq to alpha beta transformation. You can take the transpose. So this is transpose of the first one. So this is Yes, this is transpose. So this will become, if you take the transpose, then this will become cos rho. This is same it is and sin rho comes this side. And this will be minus sin rho. And this is cos rho. So this is transpose of the previous one. Uh, 
right? So in that way, you can also easily remember. But I, here I just uh, I just uh, noted down. I just remember that this is the tree. Is this inverse matrix? Yes, inverse is also there because mod of this one is cos square one upon cos square no this uh, mod is not coming one so you cannot track transpose the determinant of this matrix is how much this determinant is not coming as one so you cannot take inverse. Rajnikan, am I correct? I think say I am wrong. Then you may correct. What will the determinant of this matrix? I have written correct in correct and correct. So this is determinant, right? Determinant of this matrix is not coming as one. No, you are correct. Determinant is coming as one because for a square matrix, this uh, diagonal minus, so it is correct, you are correct. So determinant is multiply this one cos square rho plus sine square rho because it is minus, so it will be one. So this inverse will also come as. But for three cross means alpha beta zero and dq zero. In that case, you have to take this as transpose because finding the inverse of three cross three matrix is not easier one. So let us come back to the problem. So leave it, leave as it is. So determinant is one, but inverse is not this one. Because you have to take minus. So inverse is also coming this one, right? But if you are having three cross three matrix, then it is very difficult to find the inverse. So it is better to take this transpose. I don't think the, this relation is inverse of this matrix. So it is transpose of this matrix. So come back to coming back to this problem. So we have to find the mod of VD and VQ. So VD is V alpha cos rho plus V beta sine rho. So V alpha is 30 sine. 50 pi t thirty sine fifty pi t cos rho and 
थर्टी कॉस फिफ्टी पार्टी साइन रो तो अगेन इफ यू टेक थर्टी कॉमन देन इट इज साइन ए कॉस बी एंड कॉस ए साइन बी सो यू कैन डायरेक्टली राइट साइन ए माइनस बी सो इट इज थर्टी साइन फिफ्टी पार्टी माइनस रो and this row is given as 25 pi t so it is 30 sin 25 pi t so we have we got the vd quantity 30 sin 25 pi t now let us see this vq v q is minus v alpha sin rho plus v beta cos rho minus v alpha will be minus 30 sin 50 pi t sin rho plus v beta v beta is minus 30 cos 50 pi t cos rho so if you take minus 30 common if you take minus 30 common so inside it is cos a cos b plus sin a sin b so it will be cos a minus b So minus thirty cos fifty pi t minus rho. So V Q will be minus thirty cos twenty five pi t. Now they are asking at t equal to one upon hundred second. So at t equal to one upon hundred second, so v d equal to thirty sine pi by four. So it will be thirty upon root two, and v q will be third minus thirty cos pi by four. It is minus thirty upon root two. So they are asking mod of V D plus mod of V Q. Sixty upon root two. It is thirty root two. It is forty two point four two six four. And again, N P T L has. Given the range for answer as range they provided forty one to forty four. I hope you are able to get this problem. So let us come back to let us go to the next problem. So the next problem is that v mod of v d plus v q for rho equal to fifty pi t at t equal to one upon Hundred seconds. So we have found this VD, VD and VQ relation expression. So VD we got as thirty sine fifty pi by t minus rho, and VQ we got minus thirty cos fifty pi t minus rho. So if we see here, if you put if we put rho equal to fifty pi t, then it will become v d will become zero, and v q will become minus thirty. so 
in this problem they have asked about mod vd plus mod vq so this will be 30 so 30 is the correct answer now let us come go let us see the next problem So from question six, select the frequency present in VD expression if rho equal to 200 pi t from the flowing options for the ABC frame. Rho is given as 200 pi t. I want uh, you write answer in chat box. So this rho is given as 200 pi t. So it means that dq frame Is rotating at how, how much hard it, it will be? Can anyone tell what will be the frequency of DQ frame in hertz? Rajni Khan? What is the frequency of DQ frame? in which it is rotating. Yes, RK, you are correct. It is 100 Hertz. So from, so DQ frame is rotating at 100 Hertz frequency. And for ABC, it is given as if you see the ABC expression, so if we see V expression, it is given as 20 sine 50 pi t. So if this expression is given from here, you can see that you can write that ABC domain. Twenty five hertz. In a in a space vector. Stationary frame that is alpha beta. So DQ frame The DQ frame is rotating at 100 frequency and ABC domain is rotating at 25 hertz frequency in the space vector rotating frame. So you can write you can write therefore this VD will be Rotating at 100 minus 25, rotating at 75 hertz, 75 hertz frequency. Oh. 
for the AVC reference frame. So the correct answer for this problem is C, 25 hertz. Now let us see the next problem. That is the last problem for today's session. Q is reprinted as K into this VDID, VQ, IQ. We define the DQ domain and PAVC is the, this much. So this is the power they have provided. The ABC domain, what is the value of K in the expression? If power should remain the same in both domains, PDQ, PAVC, and consider three phase balance currents and voltage. Hint could be DQ in terms of ABC expression. So this is very important since this is three phase balanced currents and voltage. So we know the expression of this one, VA, IA, VB, IB plus PC into IC. Let us first find this alpha beta for ABC component. So V alpha, V beta, we know the expression one minus half minus half zero root three upon two minus root three upon two. And in this side, we are having V, V, V and V C. So this will be since this is balanced voltage currents. So V alpha will be three by two V A and V beta will be root three upon two V B minus V C. Now we will convert VD alpha beta into DQ components. So we know this cos rho, sin rho, minus sin rho, cos rho. V alpha, V beta. Vd equal to V alpha cos rho plus V beta sin rho and Vq equal to minus V alpha sin rho plus V beta cos rho. So if you substitute this V alpha in this one, you will get Vt as 3 by 2 Va cos rho plus root 3 upon 2 Vv minus Vc sin rho. And VQ will be minus of 3 by 2 VA sin rho plus root 3 upon 2 VV minus VC cos rho. 
So let us take this first and second expression. Now we will find this PDQ. So we are having PDQ equal to VD ID plus VQ ID. So substitute all these values. Similar for voltage, current expression will be sim same. So it is 3 by 2 VA cos rho plus root 3 upon 2 VV minus VC sin rho and ID will be 3 by 2 IA cos rho plus root 3 by 2 IV minus IC sin rho plus 3 by 2 it will be minus minus 3 by 2 vs sin rho plus root 3 by 2 vv minus vc cos rho so minus 3 by 2 i a sin rho plus root 3 by 2 iv minus ic cos rho so now if you simplify this expression so it will come as 9 by 4 va ia cos square rho plus 3 into root 3 upon 4 va ib minus ic sin rho cos rho plus 3 root 3 upon 4 vv minus vc is sin rho cos rho plus 3 upon 4 vv minus vc minus iv minus ic sin square four plus 9 upon 4 b a i s sin square row minus 3 into root 3 upon 4 b a i v minus i c sin row cos row minus 3 root 3 4 vv minus vc is sin rho cos rho plus 3 upon 4 vv minus vc iv minus ic cos square rho. Oh, it is not 1.5, it is having different answer. So, so if you see this will get cancelled out, this will get cancelled out, this will get cancelled out, and this will get cancel out with this one so four terms will get cancelled out so you will get pdq as 9y4 va ia plus 3y4 VV minus VC into IV minus IC. So here, this cos square rho 
plus sin square root will add up. So cos square root plus sin square root, if you add, then it will come to one. So this expression will come like this. Now again, we will again, we take common three by two. So it is three VA IA plus VB minus VC into IB minus IC. So here again, we substitute one thing to make it simple. So in place of VA, we will substitute VB plus VC and IA, we substitute IB plus IC plus VB minus VC. I B minus I. So we have written V A equal to minus V minus V C and I A we have written I B plus I C. So we have uh, substituted this one into this. So if you simplify this, then it will come like three by four so it is three by four, three by four. It will come as four BV IV plus two BV IC plus two VC IV plus four VC IC. So this term now BV IC plus VC IC. If you do simplification. Then, like if you substitute minus V minus VA plus VC into IC minus VA plus VV into IV, so it will be VA IA minus VC IT minus VV IV. So we will substitute this into this so on substituting this value into this you will get finally pdq equal to 3 by 4 into 2 vvib plus 2 vaia plus 2 vcic so it is 3 by 2 into T A B C. So it is asking about so we are having this expression, but they are asking about this k value. So k value will be. 2 upon 3. It is 0 0.667 as the answer. 0.667 is the correct answer. So this is the last problem for today's session. And I have kept some problem for your revision.
this is similar type of problem we have solved right now so you can go through it also and i have already solved these problems so anyone having doubt till here you can ask sir one so seven number question seven number yes yes ramesh what you want to ask in this problem it is quite simple one you have to just uh, just, uh, just i want to uh, uh, i want to clear the uh, matrix uh, uh, transpose only change the uh, uh, sign uh, uh, sign of uh, sign uh, row yeah yeah this is if you see the means like dq to alpha beta transformation alpha beta dq transformation I take this in our frame. Here, if you see this one also, no, no, this one not. If I get time, I will try to cover in the uh, cover in the revision session. Means, so, out the all the relationship means alpha beta dq and dq alpha. But just this, this is this is the transpose of it. If you see both the equations. Both expression. So I have okay. we have one one session left. That is the next session. Uh, that is on thirteenth October, and and on twenty October I will take one revision session. And after yes, that sir. we will we will have exam on twenty fourth I think. Twenty seven is the yeah. uh, exam. Yeah, twenty twenty seventh exam. Oh yeah. So we have two session left. In one se in next session we will cover twelfth number assignment, and in the last se session we will revise all the all the assignment from uh, starting from the first to last one. Means uh, so so that we have okay, a sir. recap before the exam. Anything other thing you want to ask? Otherwise, we will close the session today. Nothing, sir. Thank you. 
ओके वेलकम ओके गुड नाइट आई एम क्लोजिंग दिस सेशन एंड वी विल मीट ऑन द नेक्स्ट सेशन गुड नाइट सर थैंक यू